This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility, and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com, or make an appointment to see me on 9138 Sadly, I am seeing these women in their 40s with a low ovarian reserve, and we are having difficult conversations about the realities of life. Nature has not been good to the women uh, once they get past 40 and even worse after 45 in terms of the numbers of eggs that are remaining. Um, and the quality of those eggs. And I, as I indicated to uh, the lady who was asking to be a donor for her sister, the quality of eggs is our biggest hurdle. What happens in the egg, the, the basic processes uh, that create a good egg uh, involve the chromosomes in the egg uh, multiplying to start with and then dividing to produce the egg, which has half the complement of a normal human cell, the 23 chromosomes. And that's for a good reason, because when the sperm comes along with its 23 sperm, uh, 23 chromosomes, the two get together and create a normal embryo. But to do that process of division requires energy, energy within the cell. And we believe that the major problem in eggs in older women is that the basically the batteries have run down. The energy source has declined. There are some structures inside the egg called the mitochondria, which over time, the numbers reduce. And those mitochondria are basically the batteries of the egg. So as the energy supplies go less, then the the mechanism of division gets um, more difficult. And therefore, instead of 23 chromosomes, we end up with maybe 22 chromosomes in the egg or 24 chromosomes in the egg. And, and when a sperm comes along, that embryo is not going to succeed. Actually, there are, there are a couple of uh, those aberrations that do succeed, and that's why we have Down syndrome. Down syndrome is where 24 chromosomes are left in the egg, and we end up with 47 chromosomes instead of 46. And if it's chromosome 21, which is the extra one, Um, that produces a baby uh, with Down syndrome. There's a lot of research going on trying to work out how to regenerate the batteries. Uh, There are claims from some clinics around Sydney uh, that they can help, but the evidence is zero. Worldwide, people are trying all sorts of things to improve air quality with drugs, uh, with interventions to the ovary, and unfortunately, none of them have shown to have any benefit whatsoever. Like many things in IVF, when there is one pregnancy in a desperate situation and they happen to have gone through one of these treatments, people claim it was the treatment that did the good. But when the next 20 times it's done, you get nothing, no pregnancy. It suggests that pregnancy was just the luck of the draw, not the treatment. So be careful Uh, when you read things about rejuvenating ovaries. There is no evidence scientifically that they work, so don't waste your money doing it. That's the older woman, and and this week I've seen two ladies in their mid to late 40s, and we had the conversation about the chances of success. Neither have even had a go at IVF, even though I know what the odds are, and those odds are less than 1%. We did a study um, now five or six years ago, where we looked at 802 cycles uh, of IVF done in women in Australia over the age of 45. 802 cycles resulted in two babies. That's the odds. Now, having said all that to the patients, many of them, probably no, I would say half of them say, okay, I understand the reality of it. I'm not going to spend money on this. Um, I'm going to accept where I am. The other half, however... Um, despite all of my negativity, say, I want to have a go. And I'm comfortable doing that. I certainly use regimes that will maximise that chance, but it's still incredibly low. Personally, I've had two pregnancies in a woman at 45 and a woman at 47 from her own ovaries with uh, ending up with babies. I've had miscarriages, 
but that only two babies in 35 years of doing IVF. The hurdle that I think we have created with IVF and with the media coverage of these older women having babies, these famous people, is, is that if, if they don't go through a cycle and prove to themselves that there's a problem, when they're five or 10 years older, they may look back and say, I wish I'd tried everything possible. What we've done is create a possibility, albeit incredibly small. Uh, we have a question from Kirby, uh, and she says, how do you find a good IVF clinic? A good IVF clinic is one where the doctors investigate you thoroughly. That tends to be people who have specialised specifically in infertility. There are obstetricians and gynaecologists who we all get general training in obstetrics and gynaecology, of which that training involves a little bit of infertility, but not very much. Then there is a group of doctors who, of those specialists, who go on and spend another three years studying hormones and infertility. They're called REIs, Reproductive Endocrinologists and Infertility Specialists. There's a qualification from the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology called CREI. So finding a CREI will mean that you're going to be looked after in the most comprehensive way because these are the guys who know and have studied everything. There are generalists who don't have that qualification, who have had many years experience in infertility and and do provide good care. There is, however, an increasing number of generalists who I, I call dabblers who do obstetrics, they do gynecology, they do colposcopy, and they do a little bit of infertility. They are not the people to see because what they are doing is just enhancing their total practice by being saying, I can do everything but they have had no detailed training. And I have certainly seen poor handling of patients from some of those doctors, things that we wouldn't do as subspecialists in, in, in infertility. So how do you find a good clinic? First of all, find the doctor who has that qualification and at least be asking the question, how many cycles of IVF do you treat in a year? And anyone that does less than 100 cycles a year, you got to wonder how experienced they are. Now, then it comes to success rates. Now, you can go on to the government website, which does have success rates by clinic, and there is variation. But many of those variations are actually caused not by the clinic being poor, but in fact, by being good. They, I treat a lot of second uh, opinion cases where because they want to see the professor, because I'm experienced, they've been somewhere else, they've failed, that immediately makes them more likely to fail when they come to me. And therefore, my results may not be as good um, as, as uh, appear to be as good as other clinics. Another uh, part of that is if your first, if a doctor's first reaction to seeing someone that says they're infertile for six months, if that doctor says go and have IVF, he will have a very good pregnancy rate because that person is not really infertile. So there are a lot of you know, looking at numbers doesn't necessarily tell you how good a clinic really is, but it is worth looking. And certainly when you go to the clinic and asking the doctor, you need to be aware uh, of the, or, or ask them quite um, frankly, you know, really what are your success rates for someone of my age with my condition? And that's the advantage of an experienced fertility specialist. They've seen it all. Um, they can make appropriate assessment of your infertility. The third thing is obviously finding a, a specialist who you get on with, someone who you feel comfortable with because horses for courses. <laughs> Some couples prefer you know, the older, experienced, pater perhaps fatherly type figure um, in their care in, in, in all phases of medicine. Others want to see the gung-ho young man uh, or woman um, who's just out of his uh, training program is hot with every new statistic in the world. Um, yeah, so finding the right doctor, and that's a lot of that's word of mouth. <laughs> and I've, and what the, the data shows us is, in fact, the clinic that's nearest you is probably the clinic for you, unless it's got some problems like uh, those things that I've just mentioned. Um, so. Uh, for instance, IVF Australia, uh, we've got clinics basically all around Sydney from uh, Liverpool to Northwest to DY to Cogra to Wollongong. Um, so you can probably find an IVF Australia clinic near you. 
and and we certainly do have the highest number of these CREI subspecialists of any clinic uh, in Australia. I hope that helps. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website, www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu. Mm-hmm.